Julia first came to us about a decade ago. She'd been investing for four or five years at that point, having started in 2007 with a 60,000 rand lump sum and had committed in the consultation with Warren Ingram to putting a third of her salary into savings each and every single month. And she did it largely through exchange-traded funds, which were a new investment option at that time. And you're with us again, Julia. Lovely to have you. How has the last year treated you? Hey, Bruce. So nice to hear your voice. Um, I always know it's July when someone from 702 <laughs> contacts me for the annual updates. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this year has been, uh, it's had its ups and downs. I think, um, I've been fortunate that my family hasn't been affected by COVID. I know lots of people have lost their lives due to COVID. So I've been fortunate from that perspective, but from an investing and income and a, a business perspective, it hasn't been a great year for me. As we uh, discussed last year, I have a business in tourism now, so that hasn't absolutely. been Absolutely. I mean, your, your timing couldn't have been worse. I mean, and you put so much hard work <laughs> yeah. into that into that business and it was so well positioned and so well teed up. Uh, and I think you were so looking forward to the change because you built a career in management consulting and you did very well out of it and you made the change. Uh, and resigned from your corporate job, which paid a salary um, and paid bonuses from mm. time to time. And you went into business for yourself, turning yourself into a two entrepreneur family uh, because your husband is running yes. his own business as well. And that had been through its own ups and downs over the years. And suddenly you face a, a downturn in tourism. It must have been awful. But anyway, we'll get there in a bit. Um, talk to me, please, about the mm. investment journey. Um, it all started with your aunt, who was wearing nice clothes and driving a nicer car than your mums uh, um, and you said to her how did you do it and she said because I invested when I was young and you said what's investing mm. so you went to go and see Warren Ingram and he said put away a third of everything you earn every month keep doing it and one day you'll have lots of money and so you started with that 60,000 rand lump sum in 2007 and on average over a, about a 10 year period you did put away nearly a third of everything you earned correct Yep, that's right. I mean, um, when you say it like that, it sounds very simple. Um, oh, yeah. It's just Easy. the execution that that was quite hard to 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 keep it up and keep the motivation up. But yes, that's that's exactly what what the plan was. And that's pretty much exactly how I executed it um, up until recently when I, I started a business. And I mean, that the reason I was able to start the business actually is because of all that that work that I did in the beginning for all those years. It, it, it means that the business, it didn't put so much pressure on the business to earn an income in the first six months of life or even like few years of its, of its existence because my investments were paying out a kind of a, a replacement salary once I'd resigned. Uh, okay, and we I want to get to that part, which is interesting, because for the first time you've started drawing down in dividends and capital just a little bit, um, uh, and, and that's an important part of mm -hmm. what you've been doing recently. But when did you stop adding money to your investments? You started in 2007, and there was a point where you stopped adding to your South African investments. Yeah, exactly. So my, my strategy changed a little bit. That was in 2016. I stopped. That was the last time I added a, a significant amount. Um, and I was my, my strategy changed in the sense that I, I wanted to finish off paying the house. So like finish off that debt, um, get that out of the way before starting a business. And then um, having two entrepreneurs in the family is is never easy. So we also wanted to have a big emergency fund saved up in case we uh, we needed it, which we which we clearly did because of COVID. So um, so the money was going. The savings that I'd made wasn't going into investments from 2017. It was going into those other things. Yeah, but I mean, I wanted what I want to do is better talk about the power of compounding. And even though you stopped in 2016, um, the value of your investments has grown considerably since that time. And we'll disclose some numbers in just a moment. Uh, what a lot of people don't appreciate is this concept of discipline and this concept of motivation uh, because you go through periods where you keep putting money into investments and you're not seeing real growth and for a long time in South Africa during the what we call now the lost decade 
there was very little growth to be had in any kind of asset that was in South Africa. And this particular pool of money was very much South Africa focused. Yes, exactly. Um, there is a, sec- a part of this this money in um, in my investments here that uh, is world focused. But yes, the majority is South Africa focused, and and it has done exceptionally well this year. I mean, I guess it's uh, to do with mining and and those kinds of things. But if if I look at how much my investments have grown between last year and this year, I, I, it's it's. Uh, the actual number Staggering. is quite high. Um, exactly. Yeah, don't, and it, it's, don't, it's don't like do it a, yet. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. How okay. much have you invested in capital so far? So in real whole car, cold hard cash, you were putting away, and in, in the early days you were earning, you know, 300,000 rand a year, putting away 100,000, and your earnings went up to a million rand a year as you became more uh, professional and got more responsibility. And I think your peak earnings were about one and a half million or thereabouts. Um, but by then you weren't adding to these investments. But how much did you put away in total over the 10 years you were actively investing in this range of exchange traded funds that you put money into? So it was about 3.2 million rand that I invested. Okay. 3.2 million rand has been invested in total during that time. Uh, and each year, um, the investment value has grown. In some years, as a result of dividend flows and as a result of capital growth. But in other years, there was absolutely no growth at all. And that's where the despondency mm. may have crept in. And that's where the this, this sense mm. of a, a lack of discipline. At what point did you did you ever lose faith in the investment strategy? Or did you... Truly, because people say the, the the wisdom of Buffett is you pick a strategy, you identify a strategy, and provided it's not flawed, you simply keep repeating the pattern, and over time you get rewarded. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I didn't. The only time I doubted the strategy was right at the beginning of the journey because um, I started investing the year before um, the Great Recession, so um, I saw. I, I was getting a, a negative return on my investment. I, if I'd sold at that point, I would have lost money. And that definitely made me doubt. But as I saw the stock market come back and I, I started seeing some small returns, they weren't big in the beginning, but it gave me uh, it gave me hope that uh, the strategy would work after all. Uh, but I have to say, Bruce, yeah, it's only, it was only about like I would say seven or eight years after starting that I actually started to see significant growth. So I had to just trust the process up until then. Um, Warren gave me the plan. I bought into the plan and I thought like, let me just, let me just trust this. And, and, and I did. And that I think has has been what's helped me a lot. I haven't chopped and changed the strategy at all. It has adjusted. As I said, I adjusted the strategy with regards to paying off my house, the debt, and uh, saving for an emergency fund. So it, it wasn't completely um, set in stone and, and completely, I actually had a look at that uh, financial plan Warren did for me in, back in 2007. And it's, it's pretty much stayed the same so yeah that's uh that's that's been what's really been why i've had the success is just sticking at it we're talking to julia this evening super saver julia as we have christened her over the years and i look at the investment portfolio and i see uh that nearly half of her money is invested in satrix 40 and satrix raffi uh, well and then there's a chunk in the satrix finney there's a chunk in the dbx world some in japan and some in europe as well but the vast majority of her money is exposed directly to south africa which for much of the last decade has not been a great investment strategy but despite that the money has grown in value she's put aside in total 3.2 million rand in savings between 2007 and today um, and we'll be doing the big reveal on where that portfolio of value is sitting in just a moment the money show personal finance
I tell you what, tomorrow is going to be a very noisy news day, a breaking news story on Business Day's uh, website this evening. Um, it's broken the last four minutes. The Special Investigation Unit revealing explosive findings against Health Minister William Kize. Of course, William Kize is accused of uh, in, inappropriately awarding a 150 million rand contract to Digital Vibes, uh, made up of former colleagues and friends within the department. And uh, these were communications consultants charging way over the odds for services to the Department of Health. And according to Business Day, the SIU is seeking to have the 150 million rand digital vibes contract awarded to Mkize's close associates set aside. The president this morning uh, was urging a bit of patience from us as the South African public in his dealing with this. It seems that that's been moved up a notch or two. Uh, What we're doing this evening is talking to Super Saver Julia, going through her investing journey, the trials and tribulations, the huge opportunity, and the decisions that she took as a younger person uh, at the age of 26, 27 at the time, if I remember correctly, Julia, to start investing. So by starting young, putting away 3.2 million rand, do you know how much that portfolio has grown up until this year? Have you done the sums or did Warren just do the sums? No, I, I've, I've, yeah, I know. I check as I as I do from time to time the, the status of my portfolio. So, yes, I do know how much it's it's worth today. Uh, the you have in the last year taken out one hundred and forty one thousand rand in dividends and capital, um, and you explained that earlier, mm. saying, "Well, you know, you started a business, you had a, a an emergency fund, but I mean, an emergency fund in our current environment can only go so far when you are operating a business which is dependent on tourists, which aren't coming in droves to South Africa at the moment. So, did you need to start sort of digging into the investment portfolio? Did that did that hurt?" Uh, not really, because I haven't had to do it up until now. And, and the reason the reason that I saved so hard for so many years was to be able to follow my dream to start a business. So it didn't feel it felt like this was destiny, you know, like this is what I this is what I'd saved so long for. So for me, uh, dipping into the savings wasn't a problem. And the advantage, which I realized after doing this of um, drawing down capital of 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 realizing that capital gain when you've got zero salary is that you save quite a bit on capital gains tax. So since I'm not drawing a salary, my capital gains tax on the money that I am taking out is actually much less than it would have been when I earned a salary. Okay, oh, that's a, actually a very good point because without income, <laughs> they, you, know, you, you don't your your yeah. tax rate is is completely different. Um, that hundred and forty one thousand yeah. that you've drawn out over the last year, do we add it to the five million eight hundred and eighty thousand <laughs> eight hundred and eighty ninety eight rand? So it's roughly six million rand that you've had uh, uh, to date, and in terms of returns, you've effectively doubled the money that you've invested over the last twelve years. Yes, exactly, and and it's it's incredible. It, it's uh, especially this year. I mean, I, I I was surprised at how much growth I've seen this year. When I came on the show last year, I think I was sitting at around five million, and now I'm sitting at around six million. So it's uh, it's gone up purely uh, in in capital gains and dividends reinvested by a million rand in one year, which is which is quite exceptional. Especially and since just- I'm I'm looking at living off this money. It's it's positive. Hey, tell me how much work you had to do to go from 5 million rand to 6 million rand because in order to earn, if you were earning 5 million rand a year and you wanted to earn another million and put it in the bank, you would have had to earn 1.5 million or thereabouts to, uh, to, to bank that extra million. Mm. Uh, how much and that, that's a, a good year's work for a professional. How much work did you have to do to yeah. get from 5 million to 6 million rand? Just confirm this for me. Uh, yeah, that's the the best part, actually, and and like, really, you've hit the nail on the head because I've done no work, absolutely nothing. I've I've bought no no additional shares. Oh, I've bought a few shares on based on some dividends, but but very very little work, Bruce. Probably about eight hours work in total. At an hourly rate, I mean that's better than a tenderpreneur. <laughs> I mean that, that that's that's very good money if you if you can get it. Um, but that but the point is, and we must make this point very very strongly by starting mm-hmm. young and being persistent and dedicated and committed and consistent. 
Um, you have put the money away. It has been left alone since 2016. You've added nothing since then, and you've gone from four million then to six million now. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the that's the power of compound growth, and that's what I uh, I think the, the power of the show is to to really uh, so people can visualize what that means. This is this is how how it happens, but it doesn't happen really from the start. I mean, you have a few years of negative returns even. So I've had a few years of negative returns if I look back, but it's over time, the compound just works, growth works its magic and, and you get to to making you know, 2 million rand in, in, in a few years, just purely based on compound growth. Your, your house was paid for, the cars are paid for, uh, your kids are growing. Um, your business will recover one day. I promise it will. Um, uh, you know, and uh, you're actually in a, in a, it would be nice to be ahead of where you are if the economy had continued and tourists had kept coming. Um, and you would have been further ahead. Mm. But even in the tough times that we've had in an economy that shrank by seven and a half percent last year, even in an environment where you've had very little income from your work over the last 18 months, your, the value of mm. your investments has continued to grow. And that's the magic. That is the glory uh, of what you've achieved by starting early. Exactly. And and it's taken so much pressure off us financially. It's it's given us way more choices. I had the choice to start this business, which I, I probably wouldn't have had if I'd had less um, money saved up. And yeah, it's it really, I think it just opened up a world of possibility for me. I, I did do it for, for many years before having this. So it's, it's not instant in any way, but it does allow you to to kind of follow your dreams and do what you want and whatever your dream is, to spend more time with your kids, to start a business, to study further. I mean, it just, it just opens up all of those possibilities. For me, it was investing in my business, to grow a business, to, to start something from zero and, and create, create something new. For me, that was what was really exciting about starting a business. But everyone will have different dreams, obviously all achievable with, with dedication and hard work and, and just time. And sometimes you just put the money away and you watch it grow. How nice. Julia, thank you so much for coming in. Super Saver Julia always likes to share her story with us. And we are very grateful for it each and every year as we plot the extraordinary growth of her investments.